Before configuring your robot, be sure that you've built the robot according to the directions at linksmotion.com. Also, be sure that Rios 1.06 is installed on your computer. And make sure that your USB to serial converter is installed properly with the correct drivers. Once you've got that taken care of, you need to connect your robot. To do this, first thing is plug in the serial cable. Then plug in the power to the robot to the wall outlet and attach a 9 volt battery. Be sure that the jumper is removed. Turn on both power switches, then open up the Rio software and be sure your robot is connected. Now you're ready to configure your robot. And we do this by opening Rios after the power has been applied to the robot and the switches are on. The first question it asks you is which configuration file do you want to open? The default is the config SSC32. If you get this window, what it's telling you is that your robot is connected. And you can tell because it says disconnect over here. If it doesn't stay connected, all you have to do is go to setup or COM4 and pick the right COM port until this says disconnect. Let's open up the regular configuration SSC32, the default file, by saying OK. Once you've done that, all you have to do is go to the ARM and select the ARM. It tells it that you that there are no positions stored yet. Just say OK and be ready. The robot can move at high speeds. Then when you say ARM, make sure you pick the right ARM. I have the AL5D. I have the new design base and I have the lightweight wrist rotate. So I select those and say OK. I say save to save all my geometry and then exit. And now I have to check to see if my arm was built correctly. To do that, I click on the all 1.5 millisecond button and then click on test. If my robot moves to a position as such, like you see there, as you see in this picture, your robot's been built correctly and you should be all set and ready to go. If it is not in this position, then you need to fix the servos. And that's easy to do. Remove the screw and adjust it accordingly while it's running. And then when you say stop, it should go back to its configured position, like so. We can exit out of there. Now we're going to actually configure it and give it a robot a home position. We do this by clicking on the SSC32 button. This gives us sliders to be able to adjust the position of our robot. By moving these sliders back and forth, we can adjust the position of the robot. And what we're looking to do is to give the robot a unique position that we can call home. And a real good position for doing this should look something about like that. So that you know where it's going to be when it's all done. Uh, make sure that the gripper is unchecked and make sure that it can open as far as you want. If it can't open as far as you'd like it to, then what you can do is adjust the minimum position of the gripper. And as I adjust this down, you'll notice that the blue bar down below is moving up. That will allow me to move the gripper to an open, more open position, like so. And I can adjust that. I'm probably going to adjust this to about 100 or so and see what happens. And now my gripper can open all the way. I leave my gripper in the open position, and I have a home position stored, just as you see it. And then I'm going to save this configuration file by clicking on Save Configuration. I'm going to call this, since this is my robot number two, I'm going to call this home number two. And I'm going to save that. And I'm going to exit. My robot's now configured, but I want to be sure that I always have my home configuration set for my robot. This will be different for every single robot also. So to do that, if I go to all 1.5 milliseconds and say test, the robot should go to that position. When I click stop, if the right configuration file is chosen, it'll go back to your home position. If it does not go back to your home position, all you have to do is click on SSC32, say open configuration file, and pick the right file and say open. Then I should be able to click on this, say test, 
it should go to that position and then it should go to my home position. I'm now ready to If at any time the robot loses power or anything happens and it, it doesn't go to a position that you think it's supposed to go to, go to the SSC32 folder and reopen that configuration file. In this case, I called it home number two. And my robot's ready to program. If I do that, before I program any points or before I run my robot every single day, it'll be accurate every single time, as long as I make sure that that's open. Once I've got that set, I can go into the next activity where I would go to the moves. And my picture on my robot should look very similar to what I see on the, the, the actual robot itself. I can change this around orientation by clicking on the view. I can also change how I move my robot, like right now it's set up to move by XYZ. I can change that and change it, move it by distance Y and base angle. I can also change it to move by joints as well. Um, and at this point too, if I click on the play, in activity two, it asks you to play some of the demos. For instance, here's demo one, X, Y, Z. It's on step one, sequence one. So I'm gonna play the demo and this is what it looks like. Or what I can also do is I can say play and pick another activity.